you know, and, 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 and I'm proud to be numbered. You know, in the beginning, there were two parties, conservatives and radicals. The conservatives wanted to negotiate with King George III. The radicals said, no way. If it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have the republic you have today. It was a fight that didn't appear to be winnable. I mean, just imagine the little ragtag army made up of congregations in most cases, led by ministers, unprepared, unequipped, untrained, to take on what was already on our shores, the most powerful army and navy in the world. That's not a bet you'd make in Vegas. <laughs> It's not bad I'll make in Vegas either. My wife would beat me. <laughs> but I can tell you, we took on unsurmountable. And like he said, they had somebody on their side. That's right. That's right. Folks, you can't read about our founders. You can't read about the miracles that took place and not believe with all your heart that God had his hand in the making of America. Right. Now we have an obligation to save it. We used to think the Republican Party had our back, and I think of the core values we do it. If you guys don't get involved in PC, we stand the chance of losing that. There's always been an effort to take over this party by moderates. That's a nice word for people that don't have strong values. <laughs> you know, and enough is enough. And enough is enough. It is up to us. It is our responsibility. Kind of reminds me, and, and thanks to everyone. We all, you know, in my case, specifically, I can tell you I'm very fortunate I'm married above myself. You know, and uh, it kind of reminds me of the story of the guy that stopped at 2 o'clock in the morning by the officer, an elderly guy. And he says, where in the world are you going this fast? He said, I'm on my way to a lecture. A lecture about alcohol abuse, and staying out late, and the harmful effects of cigarettes and, and your body. And he said, wow, at 2 o'clock in the morning, where are you going to have this, to this kind of a lecture? He says, well, it's my wife. <laughs> Kind of reminds me, we all need this little lecture once in a while, don't we? We know, we know what we should be doing. But we do, we need that little prodding or something. Well, that's what this is about today, a little prod. Folks, we have challenges. I mean, you've got the IRS, you know, going after the conservatives, the NSA, you know, anytime you have a conversation, trust me, your government is listening, you know, and, and then you've got Benghazi that they want to bury. What difference does it make? Yeah. Yeah. Four Americans died that could have been prevented on U.S. sovereign territory. That's what an embassy is. Yep. You have Fast and Furious, Terry Bryan, murdered, and hundreds of others potentially were murdered at the hands of our government furnishing weapons. You have a president who has no respect for the rule of law. No respect. Unconstitutional executive order, one after the other. And then, and then, Schumer makes the threat the other day. We'll give Congress six weeks to pass amnesty, or the president will do it by himself. Where does he get that authority? His executive order does not change statute. His executive order undermines the rule of law. This is quickly becoming a godless and a lawless nation. We have a responsibility to retrieve it, folks, and it's not too late. But you can't continue to watch what's going on and ignore it. You can't sit on the sidelines and be a spectator to the destruction of this republic. We have an obligation. And I know you're not. You wouldn't be here and you wouldn't sit there all day long. It's a matter of engaging others. As Kay Carl and others have said, folks, we've got some work to do. We've got to get out there and grab these folks. You know, I I look at what's going on around the country and uh, just sometimes it breaks my heart. But I have some optimism. I have some hope. Because of people like you that inspire me. That inspire me. I know many of you, and I've talked to you, and I know the passion you have. A couple of you, I don't think have a real house. I think I think you get sheltered by going to events. I see you in <laughs> and, and thanks to Chick fil A. It's, a food. So it's, not, it's not all bad. But look, you look what's going on today. I mean, we have, in Arizona, and I'm going to brag a little bit, Arizona's really done a good job in many areas. Enough? Absolutely not. But we are the, the number one state in the nation for Second Amendment freedom. We've got some of the best states in the world. A restoration 
the restoration of your constitutional God-given right. You don't need government permission to carry a gun anywhere you want to carry it. Other than private property, and that's only fair. It does. Your constitutional right also is about private property, so your right to carry it doesn't preempt, you know, Lance's private property if he chooses to say it's not here. Number one in the nation. We're number one in the nation of school choice. Have we gone far enough? No. But we've gone farther than anybody else in restoring the right of a parent to decide where to send a child to school. It should be parental rights. It's inherent. We've, 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 we've attacked Planned Parenthood in Arizona. The killing of the most innocent among us, the unborn. And I tell people, I tell people every day, the day this party that I'm a member of, and I'm a member of the Republican Party for a lot of reasons, one that I believe is the greatest hope we have to, to maintain this republic. Now we have our problems, we have our wars, we need to fix them. But it is the party that I believe has the best choice. And the day this party steps away from those moral right. core values, I will no longer be a part of this party. Amen. You know, and so we have our problems. We have those that violate it. We need to hold them accountable, remove them from office. You know, term limits happens every election if we take advantage of it. And that's the way it ought to be. But anyway, as I talk about these things, you know, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm grateful that I'm the author of many of these bills and, and, and been blessed with, with good friends to help me get those through, you know, and the governor that not anxiously, but signed most of them, uh, you know, and, uh, and I'm grateful for that. But here's the challenge we have, too. We, we tend to live in this judocracy. We were warned about the power of the courts and how it would destroy or be the greatest threat to this republic. It is happening every day. Read some of the decisions they make. Just had a judge give a probation to a, to a father because he made his child, didn't give the age, walk to school a mile away. That's right. She gave him a year's probation, a $200 fine, and said that's not appropriate today, that's old school. Well, maybe there ought to be a little bit of old school involved again. For your actions and what you do. Well, I'm grateful for folks like you, and, and I know you've been here a long time, so there's so many things that I like to talk about, and I'm grateful for those who have covered many of these areas. I'm just grateful. I understand. I studied the founding fathers. I know some of those men as if I, as if I knew them personally today. The real George Washington, the real Thomas Jefferson, the real Benjamin Franklin, the real Thomas pain. How many of you have ever heard of Thomas Prince? He was the pastor of the Old South Church in Boston, one of the greatest miracles that ever occurred in, 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 in allowing this republic to become a republic. Because had that miracle not occurred, we would have never had the opportunity for, for if you will, the Revolutionary War. If you don't know that story, look it up. I, it's easy to tell many of these stories and I, I appreciate what Lance does when he, when he tells these stories so well and, and in such a passionate and, and uh, I think, respectful manner of what took place. But I, I love that. And it's just like you don't know the story that happened around, you know, the, the Star Spangled Banner and, and Francis Scott Key and what happened there and why that flag wasn't taken down. What really occurred to keep that flag up? Patriots holding it or cannon fire hit it. And as they died, others, they took them down and replaced them with other patriots because that flag was to stand because had it come down, that would have been surrender. Folks, we have a legacy that is worth hanging on to. We have, we have stories that ought to be told to our children, yeah. that ought to be told every day that we get a chance to tell them. Folks, I am so grateful for patriots. I'm grateful for folks like you. Now we, we've got to recognize this battle. We have folks who need to be replaced. You've got a 2014 election. I'm not naming names to protect the guilty. But you've got some work to do. You have folks that have undermined your values and your principles. They have voted for Obamacare. They have voted for Common Core. They have voted to fund abortion providers. They have voted to raise taxes. They've voted and worked against 
a bill in the Arizona State Senate simply to protect your First Amendment rights, religious freedom, the right of association, had nothing to do with discrimination. They worked against that. Folks, these are folks who are strictly against the founding principles that we, that the veterans and others have sacrificed everything for. Know that. Go to know those records. Know who the good guys and the bad guys are. Let's get out of work. Find your candidate in your area. Make sure you know who they are, where they stand, what they've done. And if they're a bad guy, remove them. If they're a good guy, go out and work for them. Because the challenges are out there. The left is better funded than we are almost always, but we are working. We have an opportunity to change America in 2014. Really do. I'm talking about the U.S. Senate. Unfortunately, we're not voting for our U.S. Senators. No, not for. But, uh, we don't even get a vote against, which is my vote. I'm just tired of undermining. I'm tired. Of, you know, again, we have this elitist ability out there going on where it doesn't matter what. In Arizona, we passed some of the best resolutions this last state convention of the Republican Party by 90% of the state commitment. 90%, etc. of John McCain. No amnesty under, what, under any name. History is talking about founding fathers. Protection of the unborn. Close the primaries. If you're not a Republican, and no offense, I, we, I have good friends that are not Republican, but don't vote in my primary, it's a nomination process. If you're not a Republican, you can't pick my nominee. Now if you're a Democrat, I don't have a right to pick your nominee. And if you're an independent, I don't know what that is because there's no platform, but then have your own candidate or just wait till the general. But that's how we get undermined all the time when we have this ability of people who do not support our moral values to get to pick our candidates Tired of it. We're a party with it. It means something. We stand for something. Yeah. And we're going to have to hold people accountable. May God bless you. May God continue to bless this republic. Do what you do. You're patriots. Be proud of it. Go forth. Let's take back our republic. Welcome.